Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. I am Charles Lewis, your internet marketing specialist. Thank you guys for tuning in. You have tuned in to the most popular internet marketing podcast and SEO podcast on iTunes. Also, the, the face of the known planet. Yeah. As opposed to the face of the unknown planet. Well, that would suck. Pluto. <laughs> Oh, that's been demoted. That's not even a planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's just poor poor Pluto. You are tuning into podcast number 176, uh, and we have a tip from our previous podcast. The tip says, and we actually touted this and put it on our Facebook page. Uh, if you don't know what tout is, go check it out. Go listen to our last podcast. And the tip is set marketing goals for 2013. Start with the review of your website addressing algorithm updates from 2012. Yeah, you definitely, I mean, most companies at this day, um, at this time, brand new year, um, they tend to go in and reevaluate what they're doing for marketing, specifically online. And so if that involves redesigning a site, maybe making content changes, which we'll talk about later today, or, or any other thing that happens on the web, make sure you first refer back to what happened last year. Look at all the algorithm updates. Look at um, how SEO has been changing and make sure you don't, uh, imply or use old techniques that really don't work or or frankly things that may have worked but now you can be penalized for so so be be sure to uh, evaluate what happened last year and have a strong plan moving forward absolutely uh, remember we are your friendly local neighborhood top position snatchers where our mantra is don't be a dude if you're in a position to have a device to please tweet now and you're gonna tweet hashtag SEO podcast, um, yeah, hashtag SEO podcast, uh, this is podcast 176, uh, make sure you tag us in it, at eWebStyle, um, that way we can link up and network and kick it with you. And uh, we're going to give you some information at the end of the podcast about what you can do to help us if you get anything good out of this podcast, and we know you will. Um, let's see, and, I, and let me mention this, uh, we do have a referral program, a lot of our listeners are SEO experts. Uh, if you get clients that are outside of your realm of expertise or you don't want to handle, uh, send them to us. We have a referral program where we can continue to pay you and we take care of the actual customer. Can you just sprinkle this in? As long as they're good builders. Yeah, yeah. All right, as you are. Well, you make a very good point. Um, all right, so we've got a couple of reviews. I'm going to start with the bad one. Uh, this Ooh, one is from... One star. Uh, yeah. This one is Eric11155. It is one star. It says, sound quality is a deal breaker. I listened to this show for the first time on my iPhone. Sound quality is the worst of any podcast I've heard in recent memory. In addition, the ratio of fluff to quality is way too high, and there is very little quality. Um, wow, Eric. And this was new. This was yesterday. Yeah, so so my guess is that he's listening to just one of the ones that, that are bad. We know that we have a couple bad ones. We also know that we're improving significantly on the audio quality. You know, we've been kind of riding, a, I'd say, a river, but a river is smooth compared to uh, <laughs> how ours has been. And uh, And certainly if you walked in with bad audio... And you, you already had a negative yeah. you know, um, 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 reaction. Yeah, That's it word I probably for. did. Uh, you know, probably did something like uh, other listeners who have given us low ratings, which is listen to the Geno time limit and then give up, mm -hmm. and you're not going to get any quality. So let's quickly move on to a positive review here. This is from Rob Biddle, who actually sent us an email to let us know he sent uh, in this review. Uh, he is from Australia. And uh, five stars. Five stars. Must listen to list. These guys are the place to go for for all want to be for all who want to be SEO experts. Yes, it's entertaining and the content is always fresh. The podcast cast keeps me informed on how to keep my website on the first page of Google, which translates to money. We gotta do that together. Translates to money. <laughs> we'll do dollars. Translates to dollars. Oh, that was good. I would highly recommend all SEO-minded business owners to put this on their must-listen to list. Oh, man, Thank you. Really appreciate that. Punch in the face to you. Even punch in the face to the other guy with the sound quality. Um, if you happen to check it out again, listen to the whole thing. 
Yeah. And, um, and then hit us back. Podcast yeah. Addy Web Style. Tell us if the quality improved, if you actually got something this time, or, or frankly what you would change. Curious yep. to hear that from you. Some of you may know, some of you may not know, we actually do have another podcast. It's a specifically video podcast. It's called The Unknown Secrets of SIBO Website Analysis. We did a bunch of them yesterday and the day before, and so we'll be updating that. You can go find that on iTunes. And I mention that because we actually did a SIBO website analysis. Remember, SIBO stands for Search Search Engine Engine Visitor Visitor Optimization. Optimization. And we did that analysis for a Greg Took with Best Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. I also believe that Greg is, he posted twice on our Facebook page, Tonsillectomy Resources. Uh, So here's what he posted uh, on our Facebook. Tonsillectomy Resources and then Bloody Marys. Yeah. All right. Maybe a Bloody Mary is a good tonsillectomy (laughs) resource. Uh, You know, numb it up, whatever. Whatever works. <laughs> I always thought it was ice cream. Yeah. That would be a great ice cream <laughs> company name, Tonsillectomy <laughs> Resources. <laughs> All right. Not really, but yeah. Uh, guys, I'm shopping for a keyword tool. I've been, I, I've tested Raven, Word Tracker, Web CEO, and Majestic. It seems like each is missing one part. I want one, keyword suggestions, two, keyword traffic and competition, and three, keyword tracking, how am I doing with my current keywords? Any suggestions? Thanks, guys. You don't have to punch me in the face or nothing. Um, you want to you wanna take that? I, we, uh, you didn't mention Google's keyword tool. Yeah. I mean, those are Google. Raven is great. I mean, I've tried it before. They, they do a lot of Facebook promo. Everybody likes Raven marketing. You see that right there. Um, Word Tracker, I haven't used that for some years, actually. Um, Right now, I'm primarily using Google's uh, keyword tool um, in association uh, with like SEO Quake for some back-end information about keywords. Oh, and uh, Webmaster Tools. Yeah. That's a great way to log in. I mean, they've been improving it, and so now they're showing not only impressions, but keywords and where you ranked at for those phrases. So I take those phrases, search them in Google's keyword tool, and get a whole new set of phrases, and now I have a good base to work from. Yeah, um, uh, I'm also going to throw in SEM Rush. SEM Rush, they, great And they great just tool. added keyword tracking. That's number yeah. three. So they have number one, number two, uh, and they add number three. They also do competitive analysis. Uh, yeah, SEM Rush, I, I, Rush is a great tool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, their their layout's really smooth, easy to use. Um, and what's the the other one we do for our position tracking? Oh, I can web never- position. Oh, advanced. Advanced web ranking. Advanced web ranking uh, we use for our reporting right now. So uh, check those out. Your first two are covered just by Google's tool, Mm -hmm. uh, Google's keyword tool. Uh, And then he follows up with another, guys, love the podcast, just discovered you on iTunes. I listened to several SEO casts, and yours is hand down my favorite. I won't drop names, but others I listen to beat me over the head with ads. God, if I hear e-brands again, Mm -hmm. I'll puke. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyway, I manage SEO for a few sites. I think Tonsillectomy Resources is one of them. I wonder about the Google Webmaster Tools Settings Geographic Target. Mm. One of my sites is geared to tax professionals in the U.S. Will adjusting the setting in the Webmaster Tool help the site in U.S. searches? What does it really do? Thanks, I owe you a drink. That's, that's cute, Bloody Mary. Yeah, We so want the we, one with bacon. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> bacon, Bloody Mary. So somebody else asked us a similar question about geographic location and webmaster tools a few weeks ago. And um, Greg, I'll give you the same answer we told them. Um, it's cool. Go ahead and set those purposes there. But I think um, more of your effort should be directed towards Google Local Plus and uh, making sure that profile is set up, making sure that um, it's linked with your site and all your local information is there because I think that has a, a stronger value and, um, and more, more, what's the word I'm looking for, more influence in regards to your position and where you display over Webmaster Tools. More SEO impact. Definitely. Yep. That's impact is the word I'm looking for. Excellent. Um, all right, so now we have the opportunity for our segment Algorithm Cataclysm! I don't know if you go out of shot when I lean into the camera like that. you got to check out that special effect. It's only on video. Um, a lot of our podcasts, and soon to be all of our podcasts, will be on our YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash eWebStyle. And you can always follow us, harass us, track us, see what's going on with us. Facebook.com slash eWebStyle. Twitter.com slash eWebStyle. And email us, podcast at e webstyle.com. All right. In regards to our cataclysm, um, they over this past break, Christmas break, um, Happy New Year to you guys, 
Um, 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 Google did release another Panda update. This is Panda update 23. Wow. And um, same usual mumbo jumbo. Shit <laughs> only affect one percent of searches. <laughs> So, you know, we'll see. But luckily, this, this is the 23rd. Is that, does that mean 23 updates affecting 23% of searches? <laughs> what I want to say is this. Um, at, by now, we're at update number 23. And so, if if you were affected when Panda first happened, like last year sometime, um, you should have come back from that by now. If you haven't, then change your strategy. Uh, because these smaller updates, they're just data refreshes. And so, as long as you've made the corrections, updated your content, and and moving things forward, then these updates shouldn't help, shouldn't hurt you. They should help by weeding out some of the other competition who may not be doing right. So, so, so yeah. If you're still being affected by Panda updates, check your content. Okay. Do you have any blank stare? Um. I've got one that I could use or use in news. So. Uh, so we'll do blank stare after. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll save that. Um, then the one little piece of news I got, which I just thought was kind of relevant, um, HTC, this is right, the cell phone manufacturer, I think they manufacture other stuff, they're blaming their troubles on lack of marketing. Well, we're a marketing company, I just thought we should throw that out. Um, a lot of people believe, you, so you know the difference, and I've talked about this a couple of times, the difference between uh, an expense and an investment, mm-hmm. right? An expense is cash that goes out. An investment is cash that goes out and provides a return. And as long as you're tracking that return, it's an investment. Marketing is an investment. Uh, So HTC did not invest properly. Uh, That's really all I wanted to add to uh, to that. Step your phones up. Like the uh, Evo was good when it hit the market. It was good. Um, Evo Shift was okay, (laughs) but then it's just kind of been a decline. Ever since then, meanwhile, Samsung has been spitting out killing it great phones, and so it's not it's not the marketing, yeah. it's your device. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like yeah, because they have some really cool commercials exactly. with Evo, where the the the, the, the symphony or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's the device. You know what I'm saying? The GS3 right now is the only thing that's leading the market and compatible, and in my opinion, better than the iPhone. Yeah. Five. Yeah. And so, if your device isn't at least, you know, um, um. In that in that ballpark, then then it's not your marketing. Yep. Oh, I did want to add this. I thought this was super cool. I used it. We had a New Year's party at my house, and I used this. Um, Google oh, has the, built uh, into the photo stream, right? built into G Plus. Here's the process: create an event, invite people to the event. During the event, when they get on their G Plus, so there's a G Plus app if you're on Android. And this only works on Android, by the way. Uh, the iPhone doesn't have one of the options. So you go to the event. You say you're going to go, yes, that I'm going to attend the event. And then there's a little checkbox which says photo stream or photo something. So you can't miss it. You check it. Any photo you take or video you take gets automatically uploaded to the event page. And then what I ended up doing was I had a small laptop that I had connected to my big screen TV downstairs, and I was streaming the event photo gallery. So as I'm walking around, because not many people had even G+, or even use it really, so I actually had about five G+, users um, on New Year's Eve. Um, I go at them, they check that box, and then as they're taking photos the rest of the night, that photo stream keeps recycling, and it gets longer as everybody adds photos. It was cool. It was super cool, so... Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, go, go check that out, play around with that, and give us some feedback. Oh, cool. So we got a, a question and some Twitter Twitter punches. So punching, we had a Twitter first. Punching the face to uh, Paul. He was at MBUK Social. Uh, appreciate you tuning in and following us. Um, I followed you back. Uh, punching the face to Mark. He's at HelpVid, at H-E-L-P-V-I-D. Um, kudos to you, man. He's doing some cool stuff with videos, and so we want to check that out. Um, punching the face to Chicago. South SEO. This is um his his is um at Chicago Web Biz said um love the podcast. I'm glad to see another brother doing SEO. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, it's a lot of us, man. I pull rank. Shout out to Mike. Um, and a whole bunch of other people. Um, Not he, many rap though. That's <laughs> well, me really. I pull rank rap. So oh yeah, okay. Actually pretty good. Too. Oh wow. So <laughs> two of the ones we've now mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> they all rap. Let's be realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Then and, uh, Bill Jailwick, and he's at Bill Jailwick. So just um, punching the face to you guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, and, and keep your tweets coming. 
Yep. With that, <laughs> we got an email. What's at, up, Javi? We got an email at uh, podcast at edswebstyle.com from, from um, Beetlebox, uh, Glenn. Glenn says, um, and I'll read the entire thing. Uh, yo, what up, fellas? Love the show. You guys are gurus of SEO. Here's the deal. I run a small biz, have a website up and running. Just launched a new one. Check it out. Tell me what you think. It's beetlebox.com.au. Since listening to you guys, I've been climbing the rankings for my keywords, but recently had more people out the blue contacting me to get to the first page of Google. We can help you with that if you need some help. Yep. I know, whatever, I never believed them. <laughs> okay. um, had a few contacts from the other side of the world <laughs> that wanted to exchange blog articles with embedded links. One group supplied an article with two backlinks. Um, they asked me to post to my blog in exchange. I can write an article about whatever I want that's relevant. They will post it to one of their sites and link back to me. The obvious idea is to get some link love from a relevant industry site. I'm suspicious since there are so many shifty characters in the SEO space. What do you think? Is it going to help or hurt my site if I swap blog posts with guys like that? Great question. Um, yeah, Glenn. Yeah. And so I think... Um, and this this is my honest opinion. Do your research, right? Um, it may not be a bad thing if indeed it's relevant, right? Um, but what you want to make sure is that the site that they're posting it on, because according to the email, they didn't identify which site it was going to go on. They just said one of their sites. And so they have a little advantage because they know which site you're going to put it on. You don't know which site they're going to put it on. So I would at least find that out and then research that site. Check the IP address. Maybe do treat it like a competitor. Figure out who they're linking to. Who's linking to them? Um, if it's a shared server, who else is hosted there? You know, and, and see if it's a, a decent environment to even have a link to your site on. And if everything looks great, then then go ahead and do it. I will say this: in that content in the blog you write, um, um, be aware of previous algorithm changes. Right. So don't overdo it with exact match anchor text and things like that and don't keyword stuff it you know make it a nice decent article and um and and and, and put a, one, a link or two in there and um and, and go from there I'm, I'm gonna add um because he included a sample of somebody requesting exactly what he mm -hmm. outlined in his email and uh, they're here in the states so one of my concerns would be is uh, is how much value does is Google give mm -hmm. to a and and we checked out your website by the way I, I, if I recall correctly your website is is a really nice website it's really simple um, really easy to navigate uh, they they sell boxes or they I think they sell I think they sell um, or rent boxes that you can reuse. We'll go with that. We'll check it out and yeah. correct that later. Um, but I do remember that the website looked really good. So if you're in Australia doing that particular thing and and there, you're trying to get links from the U.S., Google knows where you're at, and so there may not be that much value. I think I'd it may spend... may have an adverse effect. Yeah. yeah. The fact that they're not even have a reason to link to you. Now, if they're in the U.S. and they're entirely a moving kind of blog information resource, and that could happen with a moving company who's got an aggressive internet marketing mm -hmm. campaign, then it's possible that, you know, you guys offer a unique solution, even though you're over the pond, who cares? Yeah. Uh, Google's going to see that relevance. Information's similar and relevant. But if they're like a short 10-page, you know, moving website and they link over to you and they're not recognized as a, as a content authority, uh, then I think it's going to have little or no value for you. Better for you to find moving companies in mm -hmm. Australia, in your city, uh, or in surrounding areas, and, and try and hook up with them. Do the same thing, but just do it with people do in it, your do, area. Yeah, a little bit more restricted geographic area. And he finishes this off with, uh, great job keeping the topics light, but extremely relevant. If only someone could do the same figuring out taxes. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to start that podcast. Uh, yeah, double taxi. kick to the nuts with a steel toe boot. Booyah. Ow. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. Ow. Take this time to... It's a good time to uh, apply some correction. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, the kick in the shin is a bad thing. Bad thing. thing. Anything kick, kick is bad. bad yeah. yeah, especially steel toe double to yeah, the, the cahoon. Yeah. I might also recommend an anger therapist. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 really, Glenn. Thank you so much for uh, sending that uh, sending that email and uh, hit us up again. Uh, again, his website 
is beetlebox.com.au. Let's get to some meat. More meat. Actually, this has been pretty meatful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so I got an article today from uh, from a Jenny. I pulled it off of Search Engine Land. It's a couple months old, but I thought it was pretty good for where we're at right now. Um, this is 11 things to ask yourself when optimizing content. I thought I, I looked at the, the news are developing redo maybe you, you got you know penalized by the panda you know what is it it's the panda um Pan- pooped on by panda pooped on by the panda <laughs> yeah if you got if you got pooped on by the panda then you need to refresh your content make some changes and here's a good starting point for you so ask yourself some questions uh first question um what is this page about Right. If you're going to develop this content page, whether it's a blog post, whether it's a a web page for, let's say, some services that your company offers, or if it's just some information, what is this page going to be about? List those things out. Right. The things you want to cover on that page. Uh, next question is, uh, what is the purpose of this page? Right. You know, is it a is it a news? Is it a press release? Is it a blog post? Is it an educational piece? You know, uh, what are your goals for this page? Right. Is it to provide information? Is it to generate a conversion? Is it, you know, what is the what is the goal of this page? Do you want it to rank and just help with branding? Or are you trying to trying to educate someone? You know, figure out all this before you even start writing. <clears throat> I like this one. Consider the content timing. How long will this content remain relevant? Right? Is it on a topic that hardly ever changes? And so this page will always be useful? Is it is it for um, an educational piece that will always be useful? Here's a good one. Is it a product explanation that will be relevant until the next version comes up? Right. Good question to ask. Is it news that will always be interesting? Or is it an event, a reoccurring event? I mean, these are things that you need to know to consider how you time uh, publishing your content. Um, Now we finally get to, you know, optimizing the content. And so then you ask these questions. You know, what are the relevant keywords to use? List those out. Um, then, then you should, you know, start thinking about SEO stuff. Like, um, should you include links to other content? Um, if you include those links, then, um, then you'll be good to go. Um, what should the title and descriptions and the headings say? Make sure you outline what, what all of that information is um, before you start writing the content. That way you will have a great outline of everything your page is going to be about. So once you start writing, all of your resources are there. You've already found your links. You've already found whatever videos you want to embed. You've located the images you want to use. And so now creating that content and publishing that post is a whole lot easier and it makes a lot more sense. So um, those 11 quick questions to ask yourself when, when working on new content. Short but powerful. Short but powerful. All right, let's finish off with our uh, blank stare news. Uh, and this is pretty bad, but get, get, get pretty blank on this. Mm. All right. So yeah, yeah I was just smirk. I was just really so kid is out he's drunk driving. He hits two cars. The next day he gets on Facebook. Drunk driving, what up? Sorry about the cars I hit. <laughs> His good friends and I really actually appreciate this a lot. Let the police know. Yeah, the police the police knew that two cars had been hit. They had no idea who to go after. Boom, here's this confession on Facebook. Really? First off, that, that has nothing to be proud of, right? Yeah. Drunk driving in general. Well, that was a drunk Facebook post, though. I, may, I, it sounded like it was in the morning. Okay. Right? Which could have still been drunk, uh, of course. Um, but, you know, drunk driving is nothing to be proud of. And then hitting cars? Why? Really? That's, there wasn't nobody in those cars. Yeah. That's, that's just, that was... Yeah, he had parked cars? Yeah. yeah. He was wasted. Yeah. Like, these cars I can't believe home. he made it home, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's just, that's just wrong. Glad you got caught. Um, all right. That is the end of our podcast. Now, if you guys get any value out of our podcast, remember um, that you can do us a small favor. There's a couple ways to do this small favor. Go to e-webstyle.com slash G plus or G plus or Google plus or Google 
any iteration of G plus or Google yeah, plus, plus. Plus, if you ain't caught on yet, we're yeah. playing out the different versions of plus. We just want to make sure that everyone can get to our G plus page uh, and write a review there. Uh, especially if you have a Google account, that'll be really easy for you. Mm -hmm. You're probably logged into it all the time anyway. Um, and the other thing that you could do, three simple things. Go to iTunes, create an account, write a review, and if you choose to, send us an email E -web, you know, podcast at e webstylecom and let us know that we're, you wrote a review. We'll give you a punch in the face, um, and you know, do us that little favor if you're getting any content. Remember, uh, we are the most popular internet marketing podcast on iTunes. That is because of we, all we, you we, all. We right there, and uh, we really appreciate that. Make sure that you tune into our next podcast. Until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. I'm Charles Lewis. Bye bye for now.